What about your client? How's he feeling? Sure, I'm sure he must. Um, I don't want to speculate, but because I haven't spoken to him this afternoon. But you mean in general? Yeah, in general, is he, is he in feeling good positive? I think he knows what the evidence is, and he just hopes the jury sees the evidence the way that he sees it. A member of R. Kelly's defense team speaking with Court TV after court today. Um, big day inside the courtroom, by the way. Take a look. We've got, oh, that's right, we don't have video for you because it's federal court. Thank you, uh, Chief Justice Roberts. Um, so what we do have a sketch is uh, R. Kelly today declining, right there in that moment, declining to testify, declining to take the stand in his own defense, declining to refute the allegations himself. That happened today. All right, let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae is joining us live uh, from Brooklyn. So that's a big moment. We've got that, and we've also got closing arguments today. That's right, Vinny. The defense rested their case today, and then closing arguments began from the prosecution. The defense before that called their final witness, the fifth witness, Julius Darrington, who was a music consultant who worked with the defendant. He said he never saw any of the living girlfriends having to follow the strict rules that some of the other employees who taken the stand have talked about. He said that uh, the time that he spent there, he didn't see any locks on any of the doors, and that he spent a significant amount of time at the studio. Studio and would have been able to perceive if that was going on, but echoing what the other defense witnesses who have all been employees of the defendant have said uh, that they did not witness any abusive behavior. So that was the end of the defense's case in front of this jury. Julia, then Julia I just want to jump attorney. in. I just want to jump in just for a quick second. Sorry to interrupt you. Because um, I wanted to ask you this last night and, and, and I ran out of time. Has the defense called any former girlfriend to the stand, someone who was, you know, one of R. Kelly's girlfriends and to the stand to say, oh, yeah, he treated me well. There were, you know, there was no abuse. It was just a nice relationship that we had. They did not. There were only people who worked with him, all males who have taken the stand for the defense. Uh, they said on the record, the defense attorneys to the court, that they were working to get one of the friends of one of the Jane Doe's, but had difficulty with contacting her and having their investigator interview her. And then there were some traveling and lodging issues. So it seemed that there were some attempts to call more witnesses. We even know that they wanted to call a psychiatry expert today and ultimately elected not to call her after some rulings from the court on what that expert could and could not testify to. But in answer to your question, no former girlfriends testifying on behalf of Robert Kelly. All right, I interrupted you. Tell us about the closing argument. Closing arguments by Assistant U.S. Attorney Elizabeth Geddes. And the way she began her closing arguments really, I think, was important for this jury to understand what the government has as far as a burden, because if they're thinking about this case as far as a criminal enterprise, we've heard supporters outside saying it's impossible for one man to be an enterprise. Uh, that was cleared up by Geddes. Here's a look at what she said today. This enterprise that's charged in the indictment is not a criminal one. The law recognizes that criminals are more powerful when they are backed by a group and without the services of those people who were around Kelly, his entourage, he could not have carried out these crimes for three decades. They enabled his crimes, and they happened over and over. In that courtroom today, she went through that issue multiple times, and during all of that, she had behind her this image that had multiple photographs on it, one with R. Kelly in the middle and then different circles around him. So you see there in the sketch what that looked like. That was behind her during the entirety of her three hour plus closing arguments. And she's not done. We attempted to recreate what that web looks like in the courtroom. We have some of the photos that are on that illustration that were provided to us by the prosecution. But what the prosecution wants to make sure that this jury sees is that Kelly is in the middle of it. They are not saying is we hear, heard from the closing arguments that the other members of this enterprise actually had a criminal intent. Here's more from that closing argument. 
This doesn't mean that the members of the enterprise knew what was happening or were even happy about it. That's not what the law requires. The government doesn't have to prove that the enterprise or actors acted with criminal intent, only that the defendant had the criminal intent. So that's huge, Vinny, as far as it looks when it comes to a criminal enterprise. They're actually saying today they don't have to prove there was a criminal enterprise, only that Kelly was acting criminally.